Hello and welcome to the all new Ricky Gervais show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, hello, and Carl Pilkington. All right. You say, uh, all new, Rick. What, yeah. In what way is this all new? I mean, it seems very similar. It's me ah. and Carl. I suspect we're gonna be talking bollocks. I'll tell you what's new about it. This time you have to pay for it. <laughs> well, that is a nice new development. Yeah. Uh, but what about within the content of the show? Any of the classic features? Monkey News? Well, I think Carl retired Monkey News. I don't know why. why so that's you been axed. It's just that we, we'd sort of done it all. Do you know what I mean? The, the but will he be coming back in the future? Uh, we might do something with it, yeah. Yes, I think there'll be a campaign, you know. If I know, uh, our listeners, and I don't want to, <laughs> then they'll be doing an internet campaign now to bring back Monkey News. I just want a quick, quick question, because I'm a bit confused. Is this show 13, because we've just done 12, or is this show one of the All New Ricky Gervais Show? I didn't know where we are. Show one of the All New Ricky Gervais Show. Right. Is it now? What do you mean? Well, that, that's like that question that I put to you about Say, say if like we, I don't know, we we do something wrong to this world, yeah. um, runs out of whatever we need. I don't know how it works. Mm. Um, you put yourself down. I think you do, and I think you. No, probably just just whatever, whatever on. the reason is. If it, uh, you're talking, right you are talking yourself out of a job with NASA, putting yourself down like that. I think you know exactly how the world works. No, no, no. But you know, just like um, say if we had to go to another world, mm. right? What year would it be? Yeah. I, I explain. I told you it depends because it doesn't matter where you start, right? It depends what a year is. A year is a year because that's how long it takes our planet to go round our sun. A day is a day because that's how long it takes the world to re uh, revolve. I once. know, but you can't you can't go to another world and then start changing everything because people are going to be a bit unnervy about being on different soil. So but you it's can't not their saying. choice. You can't go to a planet and go, mm, we've got to speed this planet up, it's not all going through the space quickly enough. Yeah, but everybody's, you know, like, especially older people, they set in the ways, right? I don't think older people set in their ways are gonna pack their bags and go to Mars. No, but if they have to. Anyway, that, that isn't the point, all, all I'm well, saying- Well, they're gonna be moaning about days are shorter here, or days are longer, aren't they? Well, yeah, <sighs> you know what they like. But Change. people don't care, they like short days, they don't get out of bed, do they, until late, they've got nothing to get up for and they go to bed early. Yeah, but it's not just that, is it? Well, if it's a longer day, Steve. Oh, nightmare. That's your point, isn't it? But I'm talking about stationery, diaries, everything's gonna be a mess. Right. So what do you do? If I was in charge, go on. I, I'd just say, yeah, carry on, it's, uh, 2007, it's September, it's a Thursday, get on with it. Brilliant. I think, I think because people 26 are 26 be... hours later, uh, with a new day. <laughs> And, uh, well, 480 uh, days later, oh, it was another year, 2008. I was trying to explain to him yesterday, uh, in a cafe, about, um, the telescopes that can see back to the Big Bang. Why? And, Did you do well, that? Well, I was trying to explain what a light year was, then I was explaining to him that, you know, you sit down, you, you put your, your telescope on, you're looking at a star, the star explodes, that star exploded a million years ago, and he couldn't have it. I was going, you're literally seeing it explode a million years ago, because that's how long the light got And I started telling him that, you know, um, someone on another planet far, far away could be watching the 1980 World Cup final, if they had a strong enough telescope, because it, that's yeah, how long it yeah. took to get. Uh, it, it, look at it, look at his face. It, I can see his head bleeding. I just don't... So are you saying... Why did you start doing this in a cafe, Rick? Was it a 24-hour cafe? <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> but are you saying then there could be an alien fella? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that just like we can see things happening in other uh, on other planets, other solar systems um, that happened millions of years ago, um, there could be a little alien fella with a telescope uh, watching the Battle of Hastings if he was far enough away. Do you understand the concept of what Ricky's saying that light? is travelling at a certain speed, which means it so, hasn't necessarily arrived here yet. So we could all relive history though, is what I mean. No, if we couldn't, because we, we- No, but we're backwards. We, 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 well, no. Well, one, you'd have to travel faster than the speed of light. Yeah, I know, but say if we can do all that. Well, that, that's the big thing, you can't. No, I know, but, you know, it's only a matter of time, isn't it? Why haven't we? Hmm. No, but we're not in a rush to do it, because we can just go back in time. Well, but if time travel's possible, right, eventually, then it's already happened and they've come back. Yeah, no, but what what I mean is, it's one of those inventions that we're not in a rush to do because- no, what I'm saying is, if it's- if it's possible, then it will happen, and if it will happen, it has in the future. 
Yeah, but we don't know about that yet, do we? No, but you see my point. Not really. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's not that great just because you you're seeing that far because there's nothing in the way. You're looking at nothing. Space is nothing. What are you looking at? Mm. They say. What do they say? I don't know. If only you had a saying there yeah. at your fingertips. What I mean is the universe, they say it's it, it's non-stop, there's no sides to it. No, they don't say that. Scientists have never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in, he says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, okay, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got, you've got him for one day, what would you do with this? What would you, what would you make him do? What would you, uh, what conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say, I'm not bothered, and that'd be the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he, does he think the same way, look the same way, exactly dresses? the same? Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? That's incredible. No, because- That is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? I mean, uh, out there, listen, people are, have you heard anything more stupid than how would I know which one I was? It's the most stupid thing any human being has ever said by definition. But think about it, this other person's going, all right, thanks for, uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you'd go, should I be leaving? Or... So, how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because yeah, you're but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it's a bit weird. But isn't you it? know the truth, you idiot. Because how would I know which one I was? So anyway. But bear in mind, you, what could, would pass, you, do? you could pass I, him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks with Would you, uh, you know? You could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? Like jackass? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, wouldn't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was me doppelganger. <laughs> it can only- I wouldn't want it, to be honest. It's a- it, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because mm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. It's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was we like, that was like experiencing what it would be like if there was two cars. <laughs> yeah. He was we a discussion with himself. We could have left in yeah. that time and come back and he'd be arguing still. That, that, that is officially the most stupid thing. If the Guinness World Records did, it, it, has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But does this mean, <laughs> does this mean- <laughs> 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 Does this mean, though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything and just send me out on- Yes. And any- any- when he- when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No. No, 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 no. no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger then, Well, you're identical twins then. You found out identical twins and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little, again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that, how it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's a, it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike, do they? They're just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't, they don't carry that thing on, do they, that normal twins do? Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say, have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They've just got their arse stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay, we're trying to get more cerebral now in this in this podcast. It's a lot of science here, real science. Um, maybe we should call it a spodcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carl. This is a a, 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 a logical um, uh, conundrum um, to a certain extent. There's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right because I don't know anyone who's ever got this right. The pressure is. One, are, are asking 
sensible questions mm -hmm. and when I've told her the answer to then understand it because I've still when I've explained this to people I've laid out for them they still can't quite get the concept um okay so there's two doors Carl yeah one leads to heaven right. one leads to hell yeah. okay they're identical you can't tell them apart okay 50 50 all right obviously you want to go to heaven I assume right okay. there's two guards identical guards guarding each door Okay. Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which which is which and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what? One to, to both? No. One to either of them. You don't know which one's which though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. rules are, you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's, it's a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to <laughs> see if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. They're identical. The guards are identical. But the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's you no can't keyhole. Get near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. What do you ask? What do you ask? What question do you ask? Come on, you've only got one. Quick, this is it. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's gonna lie? Yeah, well, you want, the one guarding hell always tells a lie, the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. These, these things you know. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that <laughs> close? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get I'll on. I'll give I mean. you a clue, I'll give you a clue. They know who they are, and they know that the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. So I know that. No, they know it as well. It doesn't really come down to this, Carl. This isn't what's gonna happen when you die. But when is this useful then? Cause it's a logical- well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I wanna see if he can get it, he's almost there. Uh No, he's not almost there, what am I thinking? But there's, there's no shame in not getting it. It's there's no one. shame you, in not yeah. getting it. It's a really hard one to get. The, what, what, I mean, the shame is the ridiculous questions you asked. Um, and now I'm gonna tell you the answer. No, hang on, right, so you go up and you yeah. go, um, you right, go- Right, hang on, well, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, me and, me and Steve are decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm, uh- Look, look away, Carl. Okay. Right, then. So we've decided. Okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right. Um, I'll just say to you, Steve. I'll go. Uh, uh, got some. Uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right. You've got some post for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the right, question's uh, coming. I got. You got some post for God here. Yeah. Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish. Is, is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want to, do you want to get him? Just uh. Well, no, you've only got one question. So you're you're asking Steve is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? <laughs> well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. It doesn't help. That doesn't help. But let me tell you the answer. You ask either one of us, you say, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? Then whatever they say is the door they're guarding. 
Because if you happen to ask the one guarding hell, right? So I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So you know I'm guarding hell. If you ask Steve what door I was guarding, he'd tell the truth, right? So he'd say, he'd say heaven, because he'd know I'd lie. So he's guarding heaven. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know, you know, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of <laughs> questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> Chimpanzee, that he's raining down. What? Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's diary. Still a very popular feature on show one slash thirteen. Uh, here we are. Got a book sent to me called Freaks. It's a bit heavy, but it's got some interesting pictures in it. Read a bit about the two-headed nightingale. She slash they was on tour in London years and years ago. It cost two shillings to have a front row seat. She slash they had two heads slash two arms and four legs. They are called Siamese twins because the first twins that were born stuck together were Siamese. On one of the pictures they are playing chess against the doctor. That hardly seems fair. <laughs> <laughs> two heads are better than one. <laughs> So it's two heads, two arms, and four legs. That's just two women in one dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's two women with an arm missing. <laughs> yeah. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall. Was that right? We just got this flat and, uh... You know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, what's he been doing with that mirror and that? But- <laughs> that, that <was> a, <laughs> What? No, just, you so, know. Just, what? What? what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? No, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental and that, aren't they? And I don't know, what do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I, I don't. Experimental what do you mean? in what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? What? Of whatever they do. Chemistry, what? have a chemistry set out, they'd be doing experiments, what? No, just doing what- Singing I am what I am and just checking out their- no, each the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying like, they're doing what they're doing, uh, which- Carl, you're not having a phone as well, yeah? You're not- No, I'm not, I'm well, not. This is what, why- well, but, what, Why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasizing what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your- I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I try. I was gonna take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, yeah. you know, it could crack and- Cause it's the size it. of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it took up a whole wall. Right. right. So like, when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But, he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought, I can't take that down. <laughs> and, uh, I thought, what, what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And, it looks all right, you, you wouldn't know and what have you, but it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's, that's all, that's all I'm saying. Because if I put a nail in and it- And what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept? Specifics? Just, um, the way some people like, you know, the ones you've got, where it's just like a block of colour on a bit of canvas. It's like, what's, what's that? Just abstract. It's just abstract. It's, it's, you know, it's a vibrancy of colour. It's a, you know, an attack on the senses. Or it could be, there could be something in there that you might see. You might not see first time round, or it could be, you know. Yeah, but there's loads of stuff to look at without having to do that. But you've that's got windows. I can understand if you had a cell and there's no windows and you want a bit of colour, but you've got oh, a yeah. window to look out of and, and you've got, like, just a big block of But I was explaining this to you, that the, 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 the photograph where people, 
before, um, you know, the art was photography, it was realistic, it was realistic, and, uh, you know, they had to make it look like the subject. But then, when cameras came in, that's when people started yeah, doing I, surreal stuff. And I understand it, it, that. that. Otherwise, uh, there was no point to it. They had to find a new way to represent things that, f uh, photography couldn't do as such. No, so I, I, that's, that's like when we, when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for 700 quid. <laughs> like, well, just get some fruit, you know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for th three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but there's nothing wrong with, like, having a... We'll, we'll get... Don't don't invent cameras, then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, we've got to invent something else. Like, the abstract thing. Why has someone gone, oh, I can't have paintings anymore, because... Was it a Dali? Going, <laughs> mounting clocks and stuff, no? I mean, the first one was alright when he did the first clock, but then all the time. He's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have put you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he's, he's just, <laughs> he's not, he's not, I mean, what, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And, um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating. That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, oh. yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And, uh. That's Andy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Had of. Phone. Started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? <laughs> Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it, it landed it on the phone. It bounced off his mate's head. <laughs> went on the phone and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> well, um, you know, as you mentioned in your diary, your favourite artist is Lowry, because you can look at them for ages and see someone different every time you look at it. All I'm saying is, art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know colours out there, there's loads of colour. <laughs> we don't need to be reminded of it. <laughs> <laughs> but colour's part of our evolution, and so it does something to us. Just Only like sounds, just like sounds. Yeah, but I'm saying do a picture. Smells. Colour it in. Still use the colours, but mm. draw something with it rather than just going, a bit of yellow, a bit of red. Like that one you've got, just red and black. What, what, what's that meant to do? Well, it does something. What? Well, I like it, I enjoy it, so it does right, something. Uh, yeah, you have it then. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'd, I prefer it if it was something. And so you, and what, let me just get straight, you had a mirror on one wall, so you, you padded that wall. It's just And you of, padded the just, others. It's just sort of, uh, wallpaper on it. Right. Amazing. And there's no other art in there, not it's just an empty cell. Was Suzanne White like some art? Just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three, three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Some new words have been introduced into the dictionary. Too many words. <laughs> we should have some system where we can get rid of words if they aren't used a certain number of times. Well, that, that we do. They do die out, don't they, eventually? Like what? You don't have to use them. No, but they don't, do they? They keep adding them. And I just worry about, uh, you know, th this is the problem with, like, your head can only hold so much. Can't it? Yeah. It all very well when Adam and Eve was knocking about. There's no history, they don't have to remember anything. <laughs> all I'm saying is, fine, bring out a new word, but once you bring out a new one, bin another one. The dictionary is getting bigger and bigger, no one's keeping an eye on it. <laughs> well, I think they are. <laughs> They're not, they just, they keep adding. It doesn't grow. It, they don't just dig it up one day, it's so, got bigger. What have you done? So you're Left happy, it out. You're happy for them to stick in iPod, let's say. But you we know. can pride ourselves on having more words in the English language than any other language. I think we've got twice as many as the second. Yeah. Uh, 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 I think maybe Russian. I'm not sure about that. Someone, I'm sure someone emails, but. But we don't it's... talk the most, so there's a lot of clutter there. <laughs> what do you mean we don't talk the most? Well, you'd, you'd have to, you'd, you'd Nothing say. Nothing as that. expressive as the English language. Yeah, I know, because we've got a word for everything. I just, I'm, I'm just saying that's, that I don't use all these, all these words that are coming out. 
and I just think, like I say, keep an eye on it. Some sort of- I don't know how it can be controlled. But Shakespeare invented words. I think Shakespeare invented about 1200 words. Yeah, and we're probably still using a lot of his, so why yeah. do we keep sticking more in the pot? Right. Stop using loads of words. People are panicking in New York about the snow they're getting. It's two foot deep. They are saying it's to do with global warming. I don't get it. Two days ago they were saying the world's getting warmer and the ice is melting on one of the poles where the polar bears are. As long as we get snow on the world, does it matter where it goes? Read on the internet that heads are bigger now than they were years ago. Brains are getting bigger, apparently. This is because we're being told too much information. <laughs> we are it's told like too much swelling. stuff about things that we wouldn't have known about years ago. You've just made that leap, haven't you? Presume maybe b heads and brains are getting larger, but the fact that it's because there's too much information cramming in them, where well, have you got it that is, from? As, as time goes on, isn't it? It's that thing of, um, we're being taught more and more every day. As the time goes on, something's happening every day. You've got to remember that. No, you haven't. You have. It's the same, like I said, you know, with the Adam and Eve thing. They didn't have that much to remember. They come on the world, they go, what happened yesterday? Oh, not, not much, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in the all new Ricky Gervais show, um, there is no monkey news as such. That's gonna come back, Carl, you gotta bring that back. But we're gonna do something that we used to do on our local radio show called Rockbusters. Uh, sounds a bit like Blockbusters, a television program that used to be on television where they gave sort of real cryptic clues, yours aren't cryptic clues, yours mm. are ridiculous. So explain Rockbusters. Um, give out an initial of a artist or a band. Yeah. That knocking about like now or ages ago. And I give a, uh, a cryptic clue. It's not a cryptic clue. Um, Very rarely cryptic. Sometimes uh, it works, sometimes it's nonsense, but. Well, as, as we once said, I think it is more, um, accurately described a craptic clue. Yeah. Well. Or what am I thinking? Well, are you going to give an example or will we just do them? The classic example, of course, for me is, um, a woman, she's an artist, the initials are WH, she was wandering around Texas. in Texas, she fell over, a part of her leg fell in a puddle, wet knee Houston. That is the level. That's what you're working with, people. So, he's going to give three of these, the first email that gets them all right, the first email we get, and it's timed, isn't it, email, so we can know, that gets all these clues exactly right can win, what, a, a signed photo of Carl? Now that is exclusive. There are not very many. I don't think they even exist, do they? There are no signed photos of Carl. So this will be an, a, a collector's item. Right. So, uh, yeah, there's three different ones. When you send it in on email, podcast at com, just put in the subject thing like Rockbusters so I know what I'm looking for. Right. Right then, so three, three different clues for you to work on. Uh, first one. Oh, shouldn't I do a jingle for this? Please. Okay. Oh, that sounds cryptic! No, I'm rocking it and... Rockbusters. <laughs> uh, right. First one, the initial, right, is B. The right. initial B, band B, or artist. So, band or an artist beginning with the letter B. Mm -hmm. The cryptic clue... Well, I don't want a house that's that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Right? That's the cryptic clue. Well, I, I don't want a house that far away from the water. I want to I want to be right on top of it. Right? B, artist or band? Who is it? Right? Work on that one. Second one, it's B again. B, letter B for the band or the artist. All right. Cryptic clue. Right. That part of my leg is English. That's right. it, is it? Yeah. Right. That part of my leg is English. Initial B. What is it? Part of my leg is English. And then the last one, uh, KW, artist the band, and the cryptic clue, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment. What's going on there? Right, KW, the fitness, in, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment. Work on them, right? Send in the answers, podcast at com, and, uh, just win some 
Is that a signed picture on that? A signed picture of Carl Pilkington. Also, when you're uh, sending in your answers, or indeed if you don't have the answers but you just want to get in touch, uh, podcast at rickygervais.com. If you've got anything that you think might be of interest to Carl, we're looking for, uh, as Ricky was uh, giving him earlier, scientific facts, um, stories you've read about, uh, you know, anything which you think might just pique his interest, uh, send them in, podcast at rickygervais.com. Well, that's it. That's the, uh, that's the end of, um, the first episode of the all-new Ricky Gervais show. Sounded very similar to the old one. Yeah, yeah. Be told. It's, it's Why change a winning formula? Why, well, you know, exactly. And if you're missing the old ones, the complete archive of all our podcasts are available from next week. Go to audible.com, find out how to get to it. Absolutely. For any of your queries and questions, go to rickygervais.com. That tells you where you need to go for any, uh, Ricky Gervais podcasts or, or the new shows. It's all there. That'll explain it. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Welcome to number two in this, uh, second series of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, uh, I've been away. Um, I had a little bit of a, an express tour of, uh, America, um, LA and New York, and, uh, they're all talking about one thing out there. Carl Pilkington. Really? Yeah. Um, I, I hooked up with the Simpsons lot, they all listened to it on their, their iPods. I went down to the American office to keep an eye on, you know, things. Yeah, check it, check it. Well, as we get money for old rope for yeah, doing yeah, next yeah, to nothing, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, I'd yeah. show him a face. Yeah. They're big fans, Carl. I, I met up with Jason Bateman, you know, Arrested Development, and, uh, he knows how stupid you are. David Letterman knows what an idiot you are. Mentioned on the Letterman show. I mean, unbelievable. David Bowie listens. And they're all listening to little Carl Pilkington. I think, when I think of people like that, like, like pretty much geniuses in their yeah, field. Yeah, sure, yeah. But, uh, when I think of Bowie listening to it, I still think of him as 26, dressed well, as- Well, he's dressed as Ziggy. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. With not... a pair of those big 70s headphones. <laughs> yeah, and he's going, Hey mom, can you turn the TV down and listen to Pilkington? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I love his kooky outlook on life. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Christopher Guest. Now, Christopher Guest, um, empathises with you a little bit, because obviously everyone else sort of knows how stupid you are and not understanding concepts like, you know, the infinite amount of monkeys, but he empathises with that because he thinks that sometimes, he, he thinks that he sometimes doesn't understand concepts that uh, seem obvious to other people. However, um, I think he's being polite. I don't think you've got a lot in common with him because he did all that other genius stuff. You know, what you did was do the washing up with your pants pulled down slightly. You know, it didn't have the same effect to say. It's not been as influential as Spinal Tap. Oh, wait, for Guffman. <laughs> no, no. I mean, unless people, uh, maybe that's sweeping the nation now. Maybe if someone sees someone nude in a room opposite their house, they immediately they get, get their cock out. They go <laughs> genius. That is genius. Well, I did a, uh, uh, an appearance at the Oxonian Society in New York. It's a Princeton College, uh, run event and they have like academics, artists, political figures. They have, uh, heads of industry. They had world leaders. They've had Prince Hassan uh, of Jordan, and there was a Q and A afterwards. And one of the questions was, "Is Monkey News coming back?" Yeah. In that sort of forum, mm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's. I believe they also asked that of uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> now, Carl, is, is Monkey News coming back? I mean, maybe it depends what goes on out there. It's gone a bit quiet, hasn't it? <laughs> on, the man, well, on the monkey front. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that I don't know if they're aware or whatever that it's being covered, but it's just like, you know, <laughs> there's no point, you point. can't make news, can you? All these news channels, that's the problem with it. They've committed to saying we're a news channel, you've got to find news, well don't do it like that. Sure. I'd say put something else on, if now what's going on Cartoons. in the world. Just, just, Is just there often no news in the world on the planet Earth with six billion people? Is there ever a day when they go, no, nothing? But, but I'm just saying the news is... Uh, how, what, what is it, about half an hour long? It depends! There's news channels what, that are 24 yeah. hours. But yeah, you're thinking of one specific news programme that's on in your house. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's half an hour, how much of that- No, well, no, no! You look again! You, again, you don't- you, I've told you that not all news programmes are half an hour by definition, but you go anyway, it's half an hour. Again, you didn't listen to me. Why do you think all news programmes are half an hour? They're not. I'm just saying- uh, how much of that do we actually need to know about? But we don't need to know about any news. There you I go. mean, a a outside sort of dangerous situation. It's interesting. It's, it's entertainment. People want to be aware. People want to be hooked up. I mean, I, I don't, um, uh, you know, watch the news much or read papers. But it's funny when I'm away. I do. I suppose it's because you want to feel connected with with what's yours. It's that feeling of being part of society, isn't it? 
No, but there's, there's places, say like there's places where they don't have telly, right? And they're not watching the news. They're still getting on with life. Yes, they are, And yeah. they're bogged down with their own problems, which is the way it should be. Say like at the moment I've got a leak in the bathroom, right? Have you? It's doing me head in. <laughs> so, I, I put the telly on to get away from all that, and then you put the news on, they go, oh, there's a, you know, bad weather in, what's it? You go, oh, don't tell me that as well. I like it when you hear about inventions that are coming out, or, you know, uh, stuff they're doing in science. But you, uh, but you told me the other day that you thought everything that needs to be invented has been invented. Something they said in 1900. But, uh, so what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I mean, they are sort of playing around now. Like, they've, they've said they've made, uh, like a, a heart now that can be bunged into a body if yours isn't working and keep you going. But why is a, why is a heart that you can bung into someone to save their life, why is that a bad thing? Just because it's another thing, isn't it? That's, we're meant to die from, from the year dot. Uh, things <laughs> live, you have your bit, you knock about, and then you die. If you're gonna <laughs> live forever, how do you plan stuff? Right? That's the way I look at it. <laughs> sure. You sort of go- How big would your diary well, be? Well that diary would become intimidating, wouldn't it? This is what yeah. I'm you, you have to fill that in for the rest of and eternity. You, and you get bored. You get bored with living forever. And, you know- But I agree with you. You get bored of people. You'd have to keep making new mates, wouldn't you? Because you have discussed everything by the time you're about 110. <laughs> <laughs> 110?! <laughs> so, it's kind of like- Carl, you have the same concepts that you worked out and decided that were true at about 10, I think. I look at it life like a- like a Box big book. Chocolates? Like a big book. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. Right? And, you know, sometimes you get halfway through it and you go, even though I've been, you know, I've been enjoying it, I've had enough. Um, Give us another book. No, 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 no. Your metaphor, analogy, whatever y you're, you're trying to create there, falls down with let's have another book. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you can either opt out of life or stick with it till the end. You can't go, ah, be someone else now. You can't do that. I know you think you can. And I think in your world you can, you know, you possibly be injected into an old woman's head <laughs> when you've had enough and you come out a little baby. What I mean is, at the moment, you know, my life, uh, I'm gonna live to 74, 75, okay, right? Okay, right. So yeah, I'm probably on page, what am I on? A, a book that's got about 200... <laughs> this is painful, Steve. This is really painful. Come on, sorry, I'm, carry I'm, on. I'm on, I say if my book's got, uh, 300 pages in it. <laughs> yeah. If you, <laughs> few pictures and that. <laughs> um, it's a picture book. That's the great thing about Carl's life. I, it's a it? book for children. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pop up book. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, every page he pops in it, he goes, <laughs> all right. All right. I'm probably on like page about 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna die at 74! Yeah. He's reading a book with a few pictures in with 300 pages and he's on 170. Go on then. So, right, if, if the book was too thick, right, and there was loads more pages Let me tell left, you, this book is way too thick. Yeah. If the book was m more thick, yeah. <laughs> the book could not be thicker. If there was loads more pages left, I'd go, I can't be bothered reading on. Right. <laughs> okay, let finish the analogy! He must have known that when he saw the book! You don't- We've got to finish this analogy, right. otherwise we're gonna be here all Listen, night. Listen, he must have known how many pages there were when he got the book out of the library. Yeah, but the way they write books, <laughs> they're painting pictures more at the beginning, you're going, this is good, and then it, it gets a bit boring as it goes on, doesn't it? Okay, well that works, so you're saying that you were you no, were young- No, it doesn't work, because well, no, you just well, accepted no. that that's what all books are like. No, but there's a little bit of poetry in that, because he's sort of, he's actually saying that, you know, when he was young, his whole life was ahead of him, he couldn't wait the whole world, the promise that he was given of this world, and now he's, he's, he's a bit jaded and he's more cynical, and he realises that the world hasn't got uh, as much to offer him as he thought it was. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, but yeah. I, at uh, long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And, uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Only one of the, uh, the hottest, uh, you know, events in the world oh. calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, God. Rio, you can imagine, did not know oh, what hit it. Oh, God almighty. Oh, imagine, were you like, uh, Paul the Party Animal Parker? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God, what did you do? Oh. What did you get up to? Oh, let me tell you right now. Um, Day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhoea. 
So that's uh, <laughs> that's the that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, oh, and right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually. I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. Because <laughs> um, in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of like someone's flat that they let out, <laughs> and uh, so I had to look. I had to watch the TV was, like from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And of course, when they change the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And, um, so, but it looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12 hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because, you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes in, you've got to queue up. Mm. And the worst bit is that, that sort of half an hour just before you land when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was, she didn't know what was going on. <laughs> the noises and stuff, you know. And I was, because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And, um, and so, of course, then on the whole flight, uh, as we're landing, I'm just, I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could, I mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my, in my bag, in my hold all, just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really, because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I gotta get out of here. Of course, you know, you know, when you're in a hurry, everything suddenly everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank, get yeah. out of my way! Yeah. You know, just really with your with your with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who kind of even passes you, oh, you just oh. and uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time. Got into the t and it all went off. Man alive, it was it was grim. But th that was that was not anything compared with the first couple of days. Because the first day I was. I went for a walk, and of course, Ipanema Beach is famous. I mean, obviously, the girl from Ipanema, one of the most famous songs in the world, and it's Ipanema Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there, and it is extraordinary. I mean, the people are remarkable. There's so many beautiful women in Rio. It made me angry. I was angry that these women were so attractive, and that you know, none of them were even looking at me. So, but anyway, I'm on the beach because I I was shopping and I needed a wee, right? And we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, we in the in just the sea. Think of him on the beach, right? We've Diarrhea. Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys because they and are. And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so... well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was desperate for a toilet, and I and I was shopping, and I so I thought, well, I'm never going to make it back to the hotel, so I'll go in the in the sea and have a little swim and and just swim. Just him straining, just like a cat in. Well, well, it's right. see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, <laughs> some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival! Well, <laughs> and I think that's I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything you know. So I, so no, I don't think I'm against pissing in swimming pools. Full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let <laughs> don't piss but in, what the in the pool. sea. Yeah, well, fine. Yeah, fine, okay. Right, fish, so, fish do it. So. so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to trying to urinate, and I. So I kneeled because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to to mask what you're up to. So uh, I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> so, but luckily my my back was to everyone, so no one saw. So um. So I, so I can't I think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is. I've never seen it. Well, I, mean, I imagine this in proportion to the rest well, of you, is it? I no? wish. Um, this all, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And, uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's gonna happen. So one minute they're calm and the next minute they're crazy like a tsunami. So um so suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me and lifts me up and flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around, I can't see anything, because of course I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to, to go in the sea. 
because I didn't want, I didn't want to lose her. Oh god! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wa- genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but what with I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because well, I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving to my <laughs> friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man <laughs> waving with his cock out. <laughs> and, and and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running, would you have come running in and helped me? Not with your knob out. What? So even though I was screaming and shouting? I'd have thrown a rope or something, or, or a dinghy or something. I just, I, there's no way I'd have, uh, I, oh, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. <laughs> when, if I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. <laughs> so you'd have just let me go, you'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off, there was no way I was I gonna- I can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. Chimpanzee, that is running it down again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is where we read extracts from Kyle's diary. Um, we've had to wrestle it from him. He's never happy, but you know that's the way it goes when you're doing uh, what, you know a show as popular as this. And I'm going straight now to this entry. My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want a back garden astroturfed? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and w- I love the cat? Why? why it's why just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat and it annoys me. What do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes- We put I, food I, down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it, we're you not massage sending it. it. You massage its back, you go, no, you stressed out. Well, no, no it's good- it's, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I- I- I, I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe it! Because every time I go around there, it goes straight from the ghoulies. <laughs> You, yeah, he'd probably seen you in the sea and thought, well, if he's waving it about, I'll have a bit of that. But it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there, you've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one is a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is- And as it, for, uh, and, and, and if you're gonna criticise someone for just sitting there, uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this do one. Do you know, do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, cos he's just sat there like- <laughs> And then it was thinking exactly <laughs> the same fucking <laughs> thing. It sat there, not moving, right? And then, on the top of the box, is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's- it- it's- it's- it's food. Yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was gonna feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards, <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, innit? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why- why have we got to see something that- that young? Why- Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some- surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in but such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, because n- normally pictures are like, you know, you on- in Brazil, sat in the sea or whatever. You'd go, oh yeah, I remember that day, it was a good day or whatever. But wasn't. It's just kind of like, why have you got to see something? It, you might as well. well go just, to just, the next just, just why have you got to see something that small? So why would you take a picture of Steve in the sea? No, but what <laughs> what I mean is, why? At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? 
<laughs> well, where, where, where are we gonna stop? It's because, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They that's like right. to show their baby. They're excited they about it. They All sit right, down and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There that's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you. Because that would be a diss. <laughs> Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said, one more than one. He understood. <laughs> when we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. <laughs> no, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. <laughs> this is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> <laughs> but hummus, what, what, when did that happen? What do you mean? It's still going. It's a Greek traditional food. I know, but there's one down the- there's a restaurant down the road that that's all they do. That isn't a proper mi that's a side order, isn't it? That's like having a restaurant just flogging tomato ketchup. <laughs> hummus isn't a meal. They don't even try and kid you and get you in and flog you just hummus. They actually say it's hummus today. <laughs> Not gonna work, we shut down within a month. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's a hell of a phone yeah, call. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. Yeah. Well, I, didn't, I didn't tell you that. No, I locked it up after talking to you. Oh, right. Is that true? Um, yeah, they just said there's, there's loads of them. What do you think about that? What do you think about an island that's just full of spiders? It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit daft, isn't it? What do you think they should do then? Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders, like, wouldn't, wouldn't be good. Who says that? I don't know, someone. But, but they sort of do, they do something, there's something about if you did get rid of them all, it would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any, get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not, not everything, no. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no. The world wouldn't change. Well, it would. No, it wouldn't. Well, it would, because it's part of an ecosystem, so they're, 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 they're something's food, aren't they? No, but the, it's, it's 97% water or something. Yeah. So, how much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's more useful. <laughs> give them another three percent and make them water. Oh, God. The rain ain't stopped. The old woman with the bent neck. Now, we've not heard about the old woman with the bent neck Who's before. The she's a bent neck. Character. What's this? Incredible. She's, um, she's really old. And she's got a bent neck, yeah, but tell us something else. I don't know what's up with her, but I read. Sort of comes out of here. No, um, it's radio. We can't. They can't see what you're doing. Sort of comes out of a of a chest. So from behind, it looks like she hasn't got an head. <laughs> it's really weird, right? I mean, she's old, and I don't know what's happened. Just Suzanne said it's sad, and her bones have sort of bent up or something, or maybe she carried something heavy when she was younger on her head. And you know, I, I don't know. It's sad and everything. Yeah. But she's just she she's wandering up and down the street. Always looks fed up, but you can see of her. You have to sort of bend down a little bit, mm. but. I read just- I thought- I thought I'd told you about it She finds a lot of change. Yeah. I said, yes. Yeah. Well, as you write in the diary, the old woman with the bent neck is struggling in the weather. The rain must be running down her back. Don't know why she went out in this weather. Me back's doing me head in today. It does this every time the weather turns a bit grim. Ever since I tried to kick me height. <laughs> oh, I remember that. We've heard this before. Kicked me height and landed on me arse. <laughs> Was gonna treat Suzanne to a trip to the pictures to see Breakback Mountain, but then remembered there is a program on about two headed kid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what two headed kid? It's just a two headed kid knocking about. <laughs> and I just, just wanted to watch that. 
<laughs> what would you mean the two headed kid? It was something. On, it was something on the telly. I only saw the beginning. I thought oh, it seems a bit heavy. This. The program about the kid with two heads was a bit sad. They never go into the good sides of these stories. I asked Suzanne what happens if they sit an exam. She said she didn't know. So, Rockbusters, you gave out three clues last week. Have we got a winner? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, this was the first person to email in, but you pointed something out, didn't you? That we're gonna do it this week, the first person, but we think maybe it shouldn't be the first person because some people are up in the world when this comes up and some people aren't up in the world. So, uh, um, we're just gonna pick one at random next yeah. week. So you've got the whole week, but we're gonna pick one at random. But this one is, this is the first one we got with all the right oh, answers, we promised. the first one with the right answers, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, um, well, give us the clues and the answers. All right, so last week's, uh, clues, there was three of them. Uh, I'll give you initial of a artist or a band yeah. and a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, you work it out, you email it in, you win a signed picture and that. Yeah. Um, first one was, uh, well, I don't want a house that, that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Go on. Right, so that was B. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that, that was Beyonce. B Beyonce. Like, yeah. it's like a cryptic thing, you got that? Mm. Second one. I stand. Beyonce. Um, Beyonce. That Beyonce. part of my leg is English. Uh, the initial was B. That was Britney. Right? Britney. Yeah, so it's like British. Britney. But so you only take, you're just taking the one half of her name, are you now? Well, she's known as that now. Mm. I think she's known I don't more know who as, she more is, as, but fine. More as Britney than okay. Britney Spears. They don't really call her that anymore. Mm. Yeah. Also, British isn't the same as English. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I realised that, but it was too late. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. And That's what you're up against. Just like that, Ollie wants to be a millionaire. The last yeah. one was, uh, the initials were KW. Yeah. And the clue was, uh, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment, right? So you've got to sort of think about that. You've got yeah. to think about a fitness teacher. Yeah. He's working out and that. Yeah. But he's got a speech impediment. So no, when no. it when it like comes to like finishing, well, no, you didn't you didn't say all this in the clues. So. But no, well, but, well, but no. it was it was just that that one was Can Kanye West, right? <laughs> Kanye so, West. So I'm just saying. Why did the know, fitness teacher say Kanye West? Because he's got a speech impediment and he's been he's been working him out. They built up a sweat and he's like, right. Well, no, you didn't say all that, so it doesn't matter. But, anyway, but it. even even if that is the case, so what is he saying? He's, he's saying, all right, can we can we rest now? As in, can we rest now? Yeah, just kind of, because they say that at the end, it's like, right, everybody- So he's got a speech impediment, he's very, very camp, and he's adding words. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, but apart from that, it works perfectly. <laughs> so- That is um, bollocks, you're an idiot. So that was, uh, the first three. Who and, won? Uh, it was Gwimlin Howe Jones. Right, let me have a look at that name. There's no such name as Gwimlin. <laughs> <laughs> what is Gwimlin? Is it something from Lord of the Rings? Gwillem. Hugh Jones. Okay, and, uh, uh, a signed photo. Of, uh, um, us is on the way yeah. to him. Lucky if, you. I don't know why he wants that, but, uh, well done, he got the clue. I don't know if that's a good thing or not to get the clues, but there it is. Well, there you go. So, so, so are we gonna do some clues for next week? Yeah, right. Again, same sort of system. Uh, three of them email in and we'll pick one at random. Right, first one. Uh, the initials, RP. Right. Right. And, uh, the cryptic clue, uh. Not cryptic, go on. Steel. That woman's flower, <laughs> right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna like nick a. Well, no, it's different now. What yeah. is it? If it's a cryptic no, clue, let, let him finish it. What is the flower. clue? What is the clue and stick to it? Steal that woman's flower. Fine. Okay. RP. Right. Okay. All right. Second one. B. Is, is that the, the clue or the initial? B is the initial, right? And uh, cryptic clue. Um, keep keep whacking the cooker with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? It's a band or an artist. We kept whacking, you know, kept whacking the cooker with some sort what, of What, is it keep stick. or kept? What is it? it might, uh, if it's cryptic clue, everything matters, so. It, it, well, it doesn't really. Just, well. just think about whacking, whacking Well, no, no, give us the clue again. Just, okay. Just the, whack the cooker no, with No, no, what is the clue? Do the clue. Stick. Okay, do the clue. This is the clue keep, and the only, right. Uh, but no, no, wait, wait, wait. The initial is B and the clue is? Keep wha whacking the cooker with a stick. Right, fine. But it doesn't have to be a stick, though. It well, could no, be like <laughs> an eye. It could be a, any sort of... Well, okay then. Let's do the clue again then. Okay, so the initial's B. What's the clue? Keep whacking the cooker. Fine. The last one, uh, the initial M, and then the clue is, uh, Venice. It's, it's all water, isn't it? Right? 
how would you describe it, right, when- Oh, Jesus Christ, like, is this the one? <laughs> is Let this... him finish the clue! I wanna go home, I haven't slept, I've just come back from Rio! He might never finish the clue! He keeps going, oh, it's full of water, right? Oh, well, I don't need a stick, do you? Use your hand if you want. Well, no, 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 no
you're talking about? How have you extrapolated from this one incident of a couple of, of testy, happy That's monkeys? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. One incident. They only did it once. They've got a bullet But they're in not there. shooting around and making them extinct, are they? If they carry on like that, they will be. be. Well, that's, it's up to the monkeys to stop attacking people's yeah, private parts. As, as a, as, as, but as that's a give and take here. No, I'm sorry. sorry. That monkey doesn't know why it's in a cage. It's not going, oh, this is for my own good. Mm. Is that, um, even if it's animal husbandry, they're not sitting there going, well, I'll tell you what, um... Uh, let's stay here, cos it's, you know, they're, they're trying to do, do a nice little breeding programme here. Or we could get out and do what we do best, run amok, eat some bollocks, <laughs> right, and have a good time. <laughs> right? They don't know what they're doing, they don't- and Carl's right, the poor little bastards get a bullet in the head. For what? And I'm saying, if they're attacking a, a human, shoot them to stop them, that's fine, okay? But if they're running away and they're, you know, don't shoot them in the back like a coward. <laughs> <laughs> this or is an animal sanctuary, though. So presumably they had quite a cushy time there, because most of the ones I've visited, they've always got it easy. They're hanging around on tires, they've got comfy yeah. chairs, they're wanking. <laughs> 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 they're going berserk, they're loving it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you say that, that I, I think these, they, I don't know, I just think they were, they were, there was something nasty, there was something a bit warped in these monkeys, I mean- But hang on a minute, you've just answered your own question there. You said they're in a sanctuary, so they haven't had a good upbringing. So they're gonna be a bit more, like, madder than other monkeys, aren't they? Cos that's where the ill ones go, innit? So what do you understand by sanctuary? Well, I've been to one for seals. It's not like a borstal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He thinks it's a borstal. He it's thinks like that, scum. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that they did some bad stuff in the jungle, <laughs> exactly. and that they had a little monkey core, <laughs> and they went <laughs> send him to yeah. borstal. So, well, what is it then? No, it's a monkey sanctuary where it, it like like a haven. Well, it's not what? a haven, is it? They got a bullet in the head. <laughs> The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Talking of, uh, eating knobs. Yeah. Jilly Golden. Now she- What's she been up to? Well, you saw her in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I haven't been watching it. She popped a little kangaroo knob in the mouth. Chewed it up. What, she just found it? Did she lie on her own? No, no, it was one of the things that she actually- Oh, it was one of the, the, the uh, challenges. Carol Thatcher, you know, a daughter of, uh, one of our leaders. Sure. She popped a couple of bollocks in the mouth, oh. chewed them up, swallowed them. Oh. Uh, and Jilly Golden, there was a kangaroo, uh, penis there, dried. She couldn't even get- it was so tough, she couldn't even get through it. And then she- <laughs> eventually she what eats it. What was it, like a pepperoni? Yeah. And she- what do you think of that, Carl? What, eating that sort of stuff? Yeah. I just- I mean, I- I, I watch it, I like those little trial bits, right? Yeah. But, what- what I don't think people realise is, right, it is hard eating a little kangaroo knob. Right? Really? How do you know? No, it's just, you know, you think about it and you go, oh, I couldn't do that, right? But what they never mention on the TV programme, which I think takes it to the next level, right? They're eating that at like half past seven in the morning. Sure. <laughs> right. Which For is breakfast. worse, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if I was there and Ant and Dec said, right, Carl, eat the knob, I'd go, hang on a minute, <laughs> give us a few hours, let me get some rice and that on my belly and just sort of fill me up a little bit more, I'll pop back at about half six this evening, right. have it ready. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be happier then. It's just, it's just that thing of, you know, you, you, just, you, so you don't want to eat, you don't eat animal genitals on an empty stomach. So what are you saying? You could- I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, I, I could eat, I could eat a knob at night, but- Just cut that there, we'll loop that. If any, if any, uh, DJs are listening, no. um, just take that quote, I could eat a knob at night, uh, by Carl Pilkington, mm -hmm. maybe do a, a, a dance remix? Yeah, just I, maybe you're sort of a house producer and you could maybe get some kind of high energy beat going and then we could oh, just but. send that out to some of the gay clubs. I'm yeah. sure it'd be pop really popular. Please, please anyone, send us, you know, uh, uh that, that loop with a nice little, you know, uh, funky house beat, Carl Pilkington saying, I could eat a knob at night. No, but That's do, you, the, go do on. you know what I mean, though? With, by that. Not really. Well, I, 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 d I, okay then, right, okay. Now, you, do you, I, I couldn't do it. I could, I could not do it. I couldn't pop a kangaroo testicle in my mouth and chew it. It was dis, it was disgusting to watch. She was eating witchetty grubs. That, I mean, good on them, because they were doing it. But then again, I think, well, they, they wanted to go in there. They knew what it, they were up for it. So, on the one hand, I think, is that admirable? And is that showing, sort of, like, good British metal? Mm. Or is it, you know, I'll do anything to get on telly for a week? I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't, where, where does it stop? You know, I thought Rebecca Luz went too far when she gave the little pig a tug, but at least she knew where to stop. Yeah. She didn't, you know, mm. uh, uh, Well, it's obvious when you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you the know- The pig to, tells you that. To, <laughs> to, 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 you know, to pop the can- Also, again, where's the kangaroo hopping round without a cock? I'll tell you, here's another question, right? Bit of a spin-off with animals and that. Mm. Have you ever, right, Steve, 
killed a fly? Probably, yes. Right. Well, I was watching David Attenborough, <laughs> right? He makes his money out of flies and that, doesn't he? Do you think he's ever <laughs> killed one, or does he go, well, I can't kill that fly or that spider, because that's how I make me money? <laughs> I don't know what the question is. I don't know what this question is. <laughs> right, my mum, right, she said, if if a fly is knocking about the house, she never kills it, she always catches it and puts it out and that, and she said she'd never Who kill it. Who is she, one. Mr Miyagi? <laughs> what do you mean she catches it? How yeah. does she catch With it? With a pair of chopsticks. <laughs> no, she- <laughs> Rick, it's that time again. It's what everyone's waiting for. Can you do the jingle for us? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Yeah. Right, this week, the monkey news is about, you know, we all know, like, you know, there's monkeys knocking about that aren't happy in, right, this, in yeah. this country. Sure. It is a big problem. Out. Yeah, it's an epidemic. So, they've they've set up, like, this, uh, this sanctuary place. Okay. Where they all go. The ones that aren't happy in a zoo and what have you, it's getting them down. Um, they can phone a number and they'll come and pick them up. Pop them in this, this house place, right? And basically, they they can run riot in there. Yeah. They get freedom to sort of cheer themselves up. It's like, don't have a go at them. If they want to do such a thing, let them have a go. Yeah, right? yeah. There's three people running this place, right? And one of them... Sorry, w- where is this place for wayward chimps who don't like the zoo? What are you talking about? A house where they can do what they want? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure where it is. That's not... That's, that's a surprise. Go on. But 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 there's this place anyway. I, I, it doesn't matter where it is, does it? At the end of the day, I'm just telling you what, what the problem is. We haven't got to the problem bit yet. Go on. I'm just building up to it, right? Mm. So these monkeys, big house and that, PlayStation, uh, anything they want, gym, all that lot. Gym. <laughs> gym. <laughs> so yeah. uh, anyway, I'll cut to the chase. Whatever. Mm. Uh, one of them wanted to mess about with the woman's breasts. Right? Which woman's breasts? The woman who works there. Right. Mm. Right. And, um, she was like, right, pack it in, you know, we've all had a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> you've been sure. in the gym and everything, she obviously, you know, got a bit excited and that, up, he yeah. was fired up and that, ready yeah. for some more action and that. He's trying to have a go on, on this woman's breast, right? She was like, Have no. a go! She was like, no, you're not doing that, pack it in, and all that. The boss who's running the place was like, uh, come on, let him have a go. No- Right, you're talking shit. I am t- I'm telling you what, I know right. sometimes I step over the mark and they made it. Right, this so where, where is this place where, well one, where is this house where chimps are allowed to throw one, and two, where is this place where one of the bosses, one of the human bosses, mm. suggests to the other one, oh, and if the chimp wants to play with your tits, love, let listen, the chimp play with what, his tits. I've said before, Rick, will you please stop interrupting me? No, but Ms. listen, Neves? it's alright, Steve, because what I'll do, I'll bring the link and you can put the link on, on the website and people can have a look at the proper story. I'm just giving it them in the like, headline form here. They can read the full thing. No, you've only read the headline form. I haven't read it. I sort of read like, like the first. It paragraph. was probably "Monkey Feels a Right Tit," and you've uh, extrapolated <laughs> all this from that. So anyway, right? So he's there, and he's, so the boss says, "Yeah, you the can have a group. Saying, "Yeah, the boss is saying, let him have a Come go." Come on, Rita. If Monkey wants to play it with nipples, <laughs> let him. So she's like, "I'm not happy with this," and he's going, "Come on, you know the rules here. We've got to cheer these monkeys up." <laughs> oh, <laughs> We've got this through. is absolute. We made it. Actually, no, and and uh, in the end, because she didn't allow it to happen, the fella bloke sacked her. Got someone else in. This isn't made up. I will put the link on the website and everyone can have a look at it, but basically... I want to see the advert he put in the Guardian oh, oh. media page. I love that. Right. Woman wanted to let Chim feel tits whenever it wants. <laughs> well, it's all up there. You're talking absolute shit again. Well, we'll see. That is no way mm. that happened. Mm. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Do you know the other week when, uh, I came up with, like, a different idea of how we can sort of make the world run and that. Can we what? just have a quick recap of that? Because I seem to remember it was a load of old arts. It was, it was ridiculous. It was, um, he was saying that the, the, the mm. world is overpopulated, so the system would be where people were living too long and stuff. So what happens is, people live till 78, I don't know how you can enforce uh, that, right? Yeah. But when they die, they've got a little baby in their stomach, <laughs> right. like a pip in an apple, <laughs> yeah. that then carries on when they uh, die. Right. It, it wasn't yeah. a theory, it wasn't an idea, uh, it was the ramblings of a uh, mental you, you case. You're saying it's stupid, but someone's emailed in and said, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Good yeah, life. and did- okay. Okay, I'm asking you again. Was the letter written in shit? <laughs> but anyway, listen, right, I've been- Did it th- say, the mental I've, home, I've been thi- Mars? I've been thinking about it, right, and- and if we can't do that, right, if that's a no to that, right- Well, it's not a- it's not a question of whether we yeah, can do I'm it just, or not. I'm just saying, if, if- if that's a no, right, I've been thinking about- It is about, a no. Uh, this no, is gonna be brilliant. there's a lot of weird- I mean, You could win the Nobel Prize no, for this. But listen, there, there is a lot of ways, isn't there, in the world that some creatures and that- 
go about sort of moving on, if you know what I mean. Evolution, you mean? Yeah, there's a lot of, like, on that, on that David Attenborough programme that he's doing at the moment, he's always showing you little insects and what they've got to do, and there was one about a wasp, right, that had to fly about, right, for ages, looking out for a certain type of spider, right? It lays its egg in the when spider. When I saw it, it whizzes down, yeah. right? It, it lands on its back, so that he's got to get that right, right? It lands on it. I don't think the spider's up for anything. That isn't even aware of this is how things move about. It's not going, I've got to look out for a wasp. <laughs> so all this is like, it's got to be perfect timing. Mm. So this wasp dived down, right, sat on the back of this spider, it injects it or something with a maggot or something, right? And then that maggot then lives off the spider for a bit. The spider knows it's got a maggot in it. No, it doesn't. It does. No, it doesn't. And it's making a web for it. It goes, I've got something to look after here now. I've got, I've got, you know, responsibilities. It makes a web, <laughs> right? It sort of reverses into it and puts the maggot on the, on the web. The maggot sort of clings onto the web. Spider's there. Maggot eats the spider and then it moves on. If I came up with that idea for like a, a method, yeah. you'd say that's never gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, no! Get the way go! It's not the fact that you came up with the idea, right, for an old lady dying at 78 mm. with um, a, a baby growing in her that then lives on. It's nonsense. It's, it's no idea. It's how can it be enforced? It's like, so even if scientists thought that was the best idea in the world, how would they no, enforce no, but it? But what I'm Who's saying is- Who's gonna go, that's a good idea, we've never thought of that. Yes, but what I'm saying Get is- Get in Elsie. Who Elsie! Told, who told the wasp to look out for that spider, to go on its back, to do, you know- What do you mean who told the wasp? We've explained this before to you. It's evolution, it's natural selection. Yeah, but this- I can understand, you know, we've chatted about it before about giraffes having a long neck, but you're talking about a wasp and a spider who- that's as, because as as you're I'm attributing, concerned. um, uh, th uh, thought and will behind their behaviour. Behaviour in humans I I is, I is linked with a free will. Yeah, but most of what we do, say like how we have a kid at the moment, you don't just jump on the back of a woman and go, there you go, love, and then the baby pops out. You do if you come from Bristol. <laughs> 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 no, what I'm saying is, right? <laughs> It's all, you, you build up to it, don't you? You have that bit of a chat and you go, all right, how's it going? Yeah, and you get on and that, and then, then a little baby will come out. This is the best, <laughs> this is the Wait, best. wait, 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 I want to go back to the dating procedure there. <laughs> you, you have a chat, you go, all right, and then a little baby comes out. <laughs> That's this extraordinary. This is amazing. No, I'm Man sorry. alive. Listen. This I'll is you, incredible. I tell you, two, two bit radio's gain was 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 t secondary school's loss. It really no, was. What I'm oh. saying is, this is my first pilgrim no. book. Unbelievable. Wow. What I mean is, it it all we all get on. What I'm saying is, at what point is a wasp ever going to have a chat with a spider or or meet up with it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even understand where we are now in this at conversation. What point? Is a wasp and ever have a chat with a spider? No. What world do you live in? What's in your head? No, but I can't believe it. Carl, uh, 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 <laughs> what point is a wasp ever gonna have a chat with a spider? So in some kind of weird insect nightclub, these wasps and these and these maggots are meeting, they're getting no, but, on. Is that how you're imagining no, but it? That's what I'm saying to you. What no, are the it, odds on, on that actually listen, happening? But listen, listen. It, you'll think it, cause, because behaviour uh, in in lower forms of life is is purely chemical. It's it's purely it bypasses any any form of consciousness. Right? There's a um, a, a parasite. Um, that's like a, a flatworm, a, a platyhelminth, or it might be a nematode. It's yeah. it's some sort of uh, invertebrate. Sure yeah. Um, that it lays its uh, egg. The, the beginning of its cycle is in a stickleback. Okay, and it literally has to change the stickleback's behaviour. Okay, because it has to get into a warm-blooded animal to complete its cycle. So what it does is, uh, this parasite makes the stickleback not flee from the shadow of a heron. So it makes the stickleback get eaten. Right? So it then is in the, the belly of a warm blood animal and it can complete its life cycle. But at no point is the, the nematode or the platyhelminth, whatever it is, going, slow down as a heron coming, stay here, stay here, stay <laughs> here. And the stickleback going, why? I don't want to stay as a heron. There's no, there's no conversation. It's not they get together and go, listen, I've got something that might be, uh, uh mutually beneficial to both of us. I need to get into a heron. <laughs> You like to be eaten by a heron. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, wh where's this conversation? Yes, with a you do. It's got yes, powers. you do. No, all I'm saying is, 
you know, the idea that I came up with, you're sort of saying that's a crazy idea. It's not an idea. It's not an idea. How many times have we heard all I'm saying is, and then such a stream of nonsense that it's blown our minds? No, but that, but that's all I'm saying. That, you know, what you've just explained there with the error and having to knock about and, and for a flea to be sat in the, uh, shade and that. (laughs) Now that, now that, now see that, that, that is incredible. (laughs) That translation of what I said. Is yeah. in that sums it up for me. Yeah. He sees the headline, he reads a book, it then goes through this weird filtering system with I imagine the music in his head is boop bit boom ba discordant piano. Like I think the noise in Carl's head is like a fax machine if you've ever got that full volume. I think it's like a Czechoslovakian cartoon from 1963. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, right. noises like, yeah. uh, walks being hit. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, right. pianos so anyway. just being hit by the th- elbow. He's right. the only person you can give him a, a body of information and he strips away the facts. But the that- way he said that, I talked about, um, uh, uh clearly talked about mm. some sort of parasite in a stickleback that makes its behaviour change so it doesn't flee the, the, the heron's mm. shadow. He said, so there's an heron with a flea who doesn't like the shade. <laughs> How did it come out? I mean, uh, It doesn't it, matter, forget that, right? But what's anyway, your theory? What's your theory? What I'm saying is I've come up with something else that I want to run by you then. Go on, then. Right? So you've said, you've sort of boo-booed the idea Boo-booed. Of, of, <laughs> we've boo-booed it, we have boo-booed it. <laughs> of, of, he shows a completely different bear. Yeah, it was originally yeah. Poo-Poo the bear, yeah. but now it's Boo-Boo the bear. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so you've said no to, you know, the old woman having a kid, right, yeah. before she dies. What about <laughs> if we do it the other way, right? Ah, oh, go on. Somehow, I don't know how A yet. kid has an old lady? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's gonna be, isn't it? A child <laughs> gives birth to an old man. No. <laughs> right. What, what I'm saying is, right- Go on. Work the other way round. Come on then. So if- if somehow we can inject something <laughs> in- in like a- a body that's just died, Right. Listen to this. Imagine, Shh. but with a, imagine this is notes. So when they ha- when he hands it into the Nobel people, yeah. and they go, if there's a way that we can inject something, they go, well, what? Well, I don't know the chemical formula, but something, <laughs> something HO two. Right. So anyway, so you inject it mm. in the temple. Um, <laughs> He's narrowed it down to the temple. <laughs> well, that's that's fine. Right. Yes, yeah. you inject so, something. So you inject it in. What? What are you? Who are you injecting? This this old woman who's who's. She's been ill and that, she died. So she's dead? So yeah, we're bringing- you, we're yeah, bringing old people back to life, okay, fine, that's- that's step one. Um, we just gotta sort that out first, but fine. We'll crack that, go on, next. So we've brought back- we've brought people back from the dead, fine. Yeah, um, but this next. is- this is a way of controlling population, remember? They Sh- can't be having it away and having kids, this is just the way we're okay, gonna work so now. Okay, so as an old lady, so we start now, we start now as the world is now. So what happens? Right, so you get- you get like an old woman. Who's dead? Yeah. Yep. Injector and that. Injector. And then, and then what happens is she sort of wakes up. Amazing. Right? And she works the other way. So like, she might be 77. Yep. And then she'll have a birthday, she's 76. And she's working that way. Right. If you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you with me? <laughs> no, keep it. Because, because the thing is, you've got... <laughs> I have no I'm idea. really scared. Yeah. I'm really scared. This is the maddest thing you've ever said. <laughs> yeah. This is madder than the old lady with the pip uh, like an apple in her belly. It sort of did work. This is- No, it didn't work. It worked in your head. It's like a dream that you wake up and go, oh, I've got a great theory. This it's is like- what, This is it. Let me just tell you the, the on, ending, because the endings works out a bit better. Go on. What I'm saying is, when you die- mm. At the age of- 78. Nine months. What? At the age of nine months, because that's when you come out. What do you mean when you die at the age of nine months? You're not you're scared of dying because you're now a baby, so you don't know what's going on anyway. So there's no. Fear. So you've missed out a bit here. So this woman, what, literally gets younger and younger? I think yeah. when she's in her twenties, she's in her old age, Rick. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because that's the that's the fun part of your life, isn't it? When you're twenty and you've got all your energy and that. So before you die, you're actually having a good life rather than it being the other way around. But does she do different stuff th- th- than than she did on the way up? Because she's already lived 78 years, <laughs> hasn't she? Don't forget. She was a baby once and she grew to 78 years, yeah, then someone- then once stu- someone stuck a needle in her head and said, right, back you go. <laughs> no, we'll forget all that bit. Oh, I'll forget all that bit. How do we forget that bit? What I'm saying So is she died and she doesn't remember all her- all her- this is a new life, is it? Let she's- me just leave you with this. Right. You're talking shit. Explain yourself. What I'm saying is, old people are scared of dying. When they're 77, they're going, oh, what's- what's gonna happen to me? <laughs> little injection in the head. When it's a baby, when it's like one, mm. and everybody around it's going, yeah, it's 
gonna die soon or not. Baby hasn't got a clue. It's happy. It's playing about with its r- rattle or whatever. So it loses it's not all scared. its. So it loses all its memories. That's it. And then what happens? So when does it die? When it gets to naught? When it's one? When it's naught days old? It goes yeah, through. It just dies. Gets, People know it's. It's almost like a countdown. So you, the family's aware of it. But aren't the family getting younger as well? What's happened to the family? Forget I mean, I it then, we'll leave it as it is. No, we'll leave it as it is, shall we? <laughs> shall we? Can we all agree on that, guys? No. Should we, should we agree to leave it as it is? Is that alright? Because I don't want to hear any more from the diaries of Charles Manson. No, it's, 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 I mean, you're a fucking maniac. If you're a maniac and you'd like to get in touch, then please email us at podcast at rickygervais.com. <laughs> Doing a bit of Christmas shopping, Rick, the other day, and I was travelling around on the uh, on the tube, the London Underground, the subway system for our American friends, and uh, you know, as you know, but people around the world may not be uh, so familiar. There's a, a, a recorded voice that you sometimes get on the tube that says, uh, "Mind the gap." Oh yeah, before you open the door, yeah, mind the gap. And the reason is that sometimes in some stations there is a gap between the train and the platform, and obviously, you know, theoretically, you could fall down. And there it's different sizes, so just that little reminder: mind the gap. You yeah. look down. It's safe. Just makes you stop. Seems to make sense. Yeah. Saw a kid, teenager, wearing a t-shirt. Don't know where he bought it. It just said, fuck the gap. <laughs> he was tired of it. Yeah. He but, didn't want to mind the gap. But what I like is, what's he protesting about? I don't you know. know. What I mean? It's not about, it's not the police or the man keeping you down. That's just good, sensible health and safety information. That's like you saying, know? fuck looking both ways before I cross yeah. the road. Screw penicillin. <laughs> I know. Just, but, no, do you know what? I'm going to drink and I am going to use threshing machinery. <laughs> and I don't give a damn. <laughs> it's, I, lo- I love that about teenagers, that sort of, that kind of, screw you sort of mentality. But not, it's kind of blind, isn't it? It's just anything. Anything's a target. Anything's valid. When I, when I was a teenager, I think maybe uh, 17, I had a, a t-shirt. I was rallying against just stuff, really. It was slightly more abstract than, uh, the gap. I, I, I wasn't specifically against the gap, I, it just said bullshit. <laughs> just in general, bullshit. <laughs> you, uh, were, you were raging against the machine. I was just go, yeah, people say, hey, what, what are you, I just open my, I go, bullshit, <laughs> alright? Just bullshit. <laughs> but I, I assume that these forms of protest have never made any dent in anything in the world. Because no. I, I remember, um, when the, uh, when there was all these protests against the war, um, a couple of months back, and, uh, there was one guy, so there was a huge march in London, as you know, and they, they did these all around the world, didn't they? But there was hundreds, mi- thousands of people in London. There was one guy, he was riding around on a three-wheeled bike, <laughs> wearing a jester's hat, blowing a horn. Mm. <laughs> that was his form of protest against the was war. Was it like, what sort of horn was it? It was one of those sort of hunting horns. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, he was showing him, he was saying, this is what I believe. Yeah. And if that doesn't change people's opinions, I don't know what will. But I like the idea of Bush, yeah, just about to invade Iraq, and just the news comes through from his chief of staff. And then, and then Bush yeah, George, goes, George, um, What is it? What is it? What? No, listen, no, seriously, we've got some information coming in from London. Go on. Um, I know you're thinking of invading, invading Iraq. Definitely, but, so, yeah, why? Well, well, let's just think about it, because there's a guy on. riding around on a three-wheeled bike. Oh. He's not got the regular two, he's gone for three wheels. So. Okay, well, listen, uh, what's, what's he wearing? I don't want to tell you what he's wearing, he's just- What's he wearing on his head? Just he's tell just me. wearing his- no, I don't- he's wearing a jester's hat. Uh, <laughs> so okay, okay, no, well, well, calm down, calm down, it's not that bad. It's not gonna, uh, not gonna change my opinion about- He's blowing a horn! Okay, get the troops out. <laughs> get the troops out now. <laughs> Uh, what do it's they pointless. think they're You've got to get involved in the- I saw a, woman, a girl once again, a teenage girl, I was behind her on the tube and she had this bag, like a rucksack, and it was kind of black and it had, um, Painted in Tipex, it had uh, a picture of of George Bush, but he was kind of in the sights of a of a rifle, you know, and it sort of said "Stop the war," and it had a Barbie's head, but it was severed, and the kind of the hair was scraped back, and it was she'd been made up to look kind of devilish, and there was sort of CND signs, and there was you know "No to War" and all this, and it j- and and I sort of wanted to tap her on the shoulder and say. Are you actually getting involved in stopping the war, or have you been working mainly on this bag? <laughs> yeah, because that takes must have taken you at time. least a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. That, you could have been writing emails, you could have been getting a petition going. <laughs> oh dear, Carl, Carl. Are you, have you ever been into that sort of teenage rebellion, teenage protest? Um, well, to sort of stop stuff going on and that. Yeah, yeah. Or just you know making your 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 views heard. I, I don't I don't really like people knowing what I'm thinking and that. Right. There's no way anyone can know what you're thinking. No, but even is with that what you're doing a radio show where you spout off your nonsense ideas every week. No, no, but what I mean is a like team of surgeons could fiddle around in your head for a couple of days and they still wouldn't know what you were thinking. No, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Exactly. You're you're thinking of uh, you're thinking. Could a monkey ever be president? 
at this moment, aren't you? <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't like anyone that, like, all those badges that you're talking about, like, you know, save the whale and all that. I don't like the idea that when I get on a tube and <laughs> someone sees that, they sort of know that I want to save the whale. I don't like people knowing, it, even to the point of- It gives you a disadvantage in life, doesn't it? But, but just knowing stuff like when you get on a tube and say if you've been shopping, right, and you've had to buy an ironing board, I hate it that people sort of look at what you've got and go, oh, he's doing some ironing. Right, okay. That's gotta be rare. I mean, you can't have bought more than five or six ironing boards no, no, in your but, adult but life. No, I don't mean just ironing boards. I mean, like, right. anything big where they can't wrap it, so they just put a carrier bag round a little bit of it, and right. everyone can see what you've just it's bought. It's weird, because I bought an ironing board last week from Argos, and, and I did, did feel it? a little bit self-conscious. There you go. Because I thought, I thought people thinking, he's 30, why hasn't he got an ironing board yet? Yeah. No, I'm I, just scruffy bastard. I pretend I'm going surfing whenever I buy an ironing board. I just make sure <laughs> I go in Bermuda shorts <laughs> and sunglasses yeah. and, uh, I just walk down the street like, I still... I go, surfing USA and they think, <laughs> they think, hey, there's a dude going to the beach. I pop on a bus to go and do some ironing. Yeah. Wait, but... what's that on his t-shirt? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> He's radical. I, um, I, I get still faintly embarrassed buying toilet paper. Yeah. I always have to buy something else to go with it. Yeah. I don't like, because if you just a buy newspaper. that on its own, <laughs> if you buy it on its own, it's obvious that you've- that you're, you're dying for yeah. one, yeah. and <laughs> it's like, I haven't got any in. Yeah. Whereas if you just chuck it in with a pot noodle, it's like, well, he's eating and he's thinking about later. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. If that, you buy it on its own, you know that you've got none in the house and you've just rushed across the street definitely. to get some. Because especially if you're still in your slippers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about it for another podcast. Um, and a new one in a- in a week's time after Christmas, so, um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Have an absolutely blinding Christmas. Or a lovely whatever festival you, um, celebrate in your part of the world. Um, from Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. If you want to send us anything, uh, as ever, the email address is podcast at rickygervais.com. You can email, uh, just your thoughts on the show, if you've got some monkey news for Carl, or anything you think might intrigue Carl, or indeed maybe just some Christmas wishes, then that's the email address, podcast at rickygervais.com. I would like to wish a particularly Merry Christmas to those guys at Positive Internet oh. for all their genius input and good work um, hosting this podcast. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Hi, Ricky Gervais here with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there, all right. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Yeah. Welcome to the, uh, the fourth podcast in the series of 12. It's uh, after Christmas now. That's it for another year. All right, everyone uh, had a nice Christmas? Oh, uh, yeah, I had a blinder. I had an absolute blinder, mate. Good, uh, good presents, Carl? Right. Yeah, not bad, yeah. Get anything good? good? Uh... Odds and not, ends. Not that, not that I can think of. Odds and sods. Bits and bobs. Yeah. Uh... A friend of mine got a gift, um, or rather gave it as a gift. I don't know if you've been familiar with these. It's a charity organisation, and you go on their website, or you, you know, phone them up, and you can give someone else the gift of, say, a goat for an African family. So you say, this is what I've bought, I've bought goat. Yeah. And, and they go, oh, brilliant, where is it? And you go, no, it's going to, uh, a family in Africa. And it's a sort of goodwill thing, you know what I mean? So you buy, you buy an African family, uh, a goat. That will help uh, them for years And it's, it's like you're saying, well, I would have bought you a present. Yeah. But, but I've that, used that money wisely. Yeah, so it's almost like they've given exactly. the present. They've given the, 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 the goat. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. But I, as soon as he told me about it, I thought to myself straight away, knowing Carl's views on charity and giving, you yeah. know, particularly this seasonal time, yeah. what, I wondered what his views would be. Well, are they, are they happy with the present over there? Like the people who are getting it? What, the African family? Yeah. Is the African family sort of going, oh, I hope someone gets us a goat? That's nothing to do with Christmas for them. They're not sitting around w w w thinking, I wonder if Santa brings us some food. It's a, it's a long term thing. These are happening all year, I assume. It goes towards a pool of money that goes to, it's not like they get a, you, you're an idiot. What, you think an African family, uh, wakes up and there's a little goat with a ribbon <laughs> tied around it and they go, oh look what Santa brought us. Look, and that mince pie's gone and that glass of milk. You're such an idiot. No, 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 but what I'm saying is, does, does that fa does that family want a goat? Yes. But, well, but why? It's when not that they want a goat, it's they need a goat. Do you think- What right, do you think this organisation <laughs> is? <laughs> not, oh, just arbitrarily gonna, giving gonna, goats to they're people. They're gonna say, oh, I wanted Nintendo. <laughs> what are you- what are you thinking? Well, what I'm saying is, right, <laughs> let me put myself in- in their shoes. Well, this will be a first. Got any, but- but say- say- <laughs> say I'm- I'm- I'm one of them, right, over there, right? I'm hungry, right, I'm sat there, it's Christmas Day, right? I open it up, open the present, little goat there, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> now, if I was one of them, I'd be going, not another mouth to feed. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, there isn't enough food to go round for themselves, never mind a goat. <laughs> Don't they say like having a having a dog and that is quite expensive? They, sometimes they say, you know, what with all the injections you've got to give it, <laughs> the the food, the tin food and everything, it mounts up. And what I'm saying is, that's all very well giving them a go. Who's looking after it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm assuming it's all of my board. The goat's had its injections. That's what some of the money goes towards. It's given to them so they can milk it and have milk and cheese and whatever. I, I, I don't think it's a burden. I don't feel well, what is this, what, what do you mean? They, they wake up Christmas Day and open a present. It's not what, like that. So there's that. a thing, it's, there's a goat shaped thing in wrapping paper. I wonder what that could be. I hope it's, uh, I hope it's that goat we asked for. Oh my god it all, is! All I'm saying it's is. just a, it's just a nice marketing way of distributing wealth. It's the way of going, this is a nice gift. It's like people sometimes they say, don't send flowers at a funeral. They don't send flowers. Uh, give it, give some money to the local hospice. Yeah. It's just a way of redirecting cash. But, but the thing is, why do they want that goat? What's the main reason? <laughs> to, what, What's the main, what does a goat give you? Milk. milk. Right. Now, wouldn't it be easy to, to just send them a bottle of milk? <laughs> <laughs> Without all the hassle and the headaches that come with it. That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is, think about the goat. That was happy over here. <laughs> Suddenly, it's on barren land. <laughs> no grass. <laughs> I'm gonna burst! <laughs> what do you mean? You didn't <laughs> send a goat from here. I'm saying, who's happy at the end of this, right? <gasps> You've got a fella who hasn't got a present over here because the mate bought him a goat, right? <laughs> so, 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 yeah, let's do this, let's do this properly. So there's a tick. He's not happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> then, you've got the person who's opened it, who, like you said, wanted something else, right? It's a goat. They go, who's gonna look after this, right? So tick, they're not happy. And then you've got the goat going, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Tell you what a lot of people are wondering, um, Carl, is, uh, what I received for, from Ricky this year. Go on. Nothing! Absolutely nothing. Uh, I remember actually after my birthday he said, oh yeah, I'll be getting you a little gift. Forgot. So I've had nothing from him this year. He said, man, he's got a little bit of cash in his pocket now. What I'm hoping is that maybe he'll pull it over the next five years and buy me something I've been reading about recently. Now, you definitely love this, surely. Have you started seeing this now? Virgin, I started plugging Virgin Galactic. I think it's something like mm. 200,000 quid mm. and they, you'll get a chance to go in a space shuttle into mm. space. Now, I don't know what your feelings are, Rick. You know, I know you've probably got a bit of cash in the bank. I was, honestly, I was thinking of giving you another signed extras DVD. Some, anything. It's the thought that counts, so okay. that would be great, but- Cause um, I've got some knocking round, I could give you one of those. You've already, I know you've already got one of those, but sure. I don't, I don't mind, they don't cost me much. No, great. great. Uh, and do you like the book Flanimals? Um, I just, well, it's, I know it's aimed at five-year-olds, so I don't know okay, why I personally would want it, but- But, you know, that, that's gonna be in the little- yeah. Little selection box for you. Great. But, but no, the trip into space, I don't know about that. I mean, you've got a bit of cash. Would you think about that? Would you be interested, you and your missus, oh, going into space? I don't know. I, I, you have to be, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's not the, it's not the money. There are things that I would spend 200 grand on as a, as a little folly, but I think, if, you know, a, an individual jetpack, for example. Right. You know, I'd do that. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd like to see the Earth from, you know, a uh, couple hundred miles up, that'd be good. But I don't know if that's quite worth it yet. The other thing is the safety, because I'm worried that I want to see a lot of people go up there first. Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't be the first bloke to go on an aeroplane. No, no, no. No, uh, you know, I'd, I'd want to see a few pioneers go, it's, it's really safe, before yeah. I got on something well, like I that. Well, I believe yeah. the actress Victoria Principal is volunteering herself. So, uh, I think she maybe used to be in Dynasty or Dallas. So well, I'll see know. what happens to her. Yeah. If, uh, if, if, you know, I think if she can do it, then- No, uh, if Vicky P comes back all right, rather than like those monkeys they sent up years ago, yeah. then we'll all be a lot more relaxed. Exactly, if they put electrodes on her and it, it, it exactly. all works out fine. And there'll, might... be, there'll be a banana, you know, shoot, issuing bananas, and there'll be yeah. buttons, press left, press right. Yeah, and I, and I might consider it. Carl, thoughts? Going to space? Mm. No. It's not, it's not worth it. What's the boy? Wouldn't it be a fascinating experience to go into space and look back mm. at the Earth? There's, there's no out there, though, is there? <laughs> there's I mean, no out there. <laughs> say that again. Well, there's, there's no out there, though, is there? Right. I mean, what, at what point are you all meant to be happy? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're floating about up there, and you because you don't get out, do you? Uh, what, you mean to do some duty-free shopping? I'm just talking, you don't go floating about, do you? You stay in your seat. 
Mm. Well, they no. probably let you move around on the shuttle. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about getting out. For me, when you well, go you want to get out into space? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When you go on holiday, the flight bit isn't the best bit of the holiday, is it? That's <laughs> the bit you've got to do. So what I'm saying is you've got to stay on this and then you go back home. <laughs> so you don't take luggage, right? <laughs> I don't see the point. Right, so you're there, you're sat in your own clothes for the whole time, same clothes the whole time. But I don't understand what- what- what is the point? I think it's the view- I think it's two things. I think it's the view mm. and being able to be part of an exclusive club. I went into space. Uh, it's- it's all that thing about man conquering nature. And- and you're one of that elite few that have managed to pop up, see the world from a distance that no one else can see it from, and then pop down. You know, that- that's it, of course. Yeah. So you- all that way just for the view? Yeah. Is it worth it? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other places I haven't seen anyway, right, before I think about that. I think if you've done everywhere, I haven't been to Scotland yet, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? So, just have a look in your back garden before you go looking in someone else's. In space. Yeah. 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 Uh, what would be in- what would make it a, a trip worthwhile for you? I mean, if you did go into space, if we gave it to you free of charge, we said, Carl, go up I know space. the answer, I know the answer to this, Steve. He's thinking, I'd like to meet some aliens that can talk <laughs> like I do, yeah. and I can understand them, and they can tell me something. Like, like what? Oh, uh, they met God, he was alright. That- that's the sort of thing, that's what he's gonna say. He'd like them to look like monkeys in spacesuits. Yeah. That'd be his ideal thing. He'd like to go to the planet of the he apes. He'd like to go to the planet of the apes. He yeah, would love they to go that. to the- Look, he's nodding. He's yeah. nodding. Thoughts, Carl? Yeah. I mean, for me- What do you mean, just, yes? Well, yeah, that- that'd be brilliant. What would be brilliant? Seeing a little alien and that, having a chat with him, finding out what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> what's been going on?! No, no. But, <gasps> but don't you think that- like, I mean, <laughs> if you bought me that as a present, right? Yeah. Either of you. Yeah. I wouldn't be that happy. For me, that's a little bit like- Well, this is a lot annoying, because we've got you a trip <laughs> to space and together. a goat. Yeah. Yeah, we- <laughs> Do you know how, like, I'm- I'm sort of- I am interested in- Sort of going on another planet, right? Not <laughs> oh, you are on another planet, mate. No, no, but do you know what I mean? It be it would be quite sort of interesting. How do you think you'd get there? Well, yeah, you you'd go on a rocket and stuff. But what I'm saying is, at least you know when you get there, you're getting out. You're having a bit of a wander. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be happy in just the journey bit of it. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Great, isn't it? But, but the thing is, right, I was- because I was looking into it a bit, because I, I was reading about the- the Virgin Atlantic yeah. thing, right? And I was reading something that in, uh, in 1971, right, three of them went up there, can't remember the names, um, wasn't the main one, it wasn't like the Buzz- the Buzz and the- the Armstrong one and that. So another three blokes went up. And, um, there was one bloke in the rocket, right, the other two, Wandered off, had a had a walk about, seeing what rocks they can find in that. And that bloke who was in the rocket, right, he was the loneliest man ever in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I to do. What that was. I don't know what to do. I don't know if that's some sort of profound poetry or I don't. I, <laughs> I do, <laughs> you know, do you know what I think he's trying to say? I I think he's trying to say that uh, he was. What are you trying to say? No, stop, stop, stop for a minute, because I just want to just recapture that moment. Just say that again, that sentence again. Right. The other two had gone off picking up rocks, yeah. right? He sat on his own in the rocket, and he was the loneliest man in the world. I can't, I know what he's <laughs> trying to say. He I do, right. He's, I he's, don't know what he means. Well, right. He's trying to say he was, by definition, uh, a human furthest away from all other human contact. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, okay. No, you know, you said loneliest. Loneliest it evokes an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like he started crying and writing poetry and listening to, uh, Morrissey records. Uh, you, you mean he was the most remote man? Well, yeah, he was saying how, like, he's on the rocket on his own, right? Yeah. And I think I worked it out because it was in kilometres, right? And I think it turned out that they, right, the other two spacemen picking mm. rocks and that, they were two and a half thousand miles away from him, right? So they were they were miles away. They, they what two and a half thousand miles? Yeah, yeah. and they, and they, and they uh, but they had each other. They had each other. Yeah, you had the world right across the other way. Everyone getting on with their lives. Yeah, he was he was on his own. That's, that's weird, isn't it? But what I was thinking is, right? Say because I always sort of try and put myself in a situation. Yeah. When I hear about a weird thing that's gone on, I always think, what would I do? You know what I mean? 
And I was thinking about it, right? Do you think when he got up in the morning, he still bothered to put his clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that came into your mind. No, when just you because I always, there. you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> even if like my girlfriend Suzanne's out at work and that, I'm not happy walking about with everything out because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> What do you mean, like getting it trapped in the microwave? Well, I, I just mean, you know, you never yeah. know someone's going to turn up. No, I don't like what I don't like. No, I, I, I always pop some pants on or a towel, well, even if I'm not alone. always. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've knocked on your door when you've when you've been stood there with. No, yeah, no he's yeah, taking his trousers off. No, I did it especially oh, knowing right, knowing right. that you were there. I've done it especially to annoy you. Oh, right. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Do you think he? Do you think he was walking about the rocket with his tackle out, or, or did he go? Away. Well, you know, no one's watching here. You do you reckon I mean? it floats up or down? Depends on space, isn't it? Depends on how long it is. Yeah. I don't know what I mean by that, but it seems to make sense. <laughs> yeah. But don't they have cameras for NASA to monitor what's going on inside the spaceship? Not all the time. No, I bet they've got to give him some sort of privacy. Now that would end up on the internet. Yeah. Him well, floating around with his floaty knob. Well, um, if you, uh, uh, are the man who was up in a space rocket and was for a short period the loneliest man in the world, we'd love to hear from you, we'd love to hear what you did with your time, um, how lonely you felt. And also, lonely. did you, did you float around, um, with your cock and balls out? Um, what was that like? Did it, <laughs> did it float up or did it float down? These are just some of the questions <laughs> that we'd like, yeah. so if you are that person, or maybe you know them, maybe they're a neighbour of yours, then you can get in touch with us at podcast at rickygervais.com. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. <laughs> We've done radio and stuff in the past, Rick, and we have never had the kind of response that we've had from these podcasts. I mean, it's amazing. Are emailing in by the, the hundreds of thousands, it's meant, well, maybe not hundreds of thousands, but I, didn't, I didn't count them, but thousands, certainly. Crazy amounts of email. I couldn't really get through them. I've just managed to pick out a few. It's because it's, so, it's, it's global now. It's uh, people all around the world are listening, and that's so exciting. We've got just loads from America, mm. Australia. It's mad. Yeah, New Zealand, Canada. And um, these are just some of the ones that I've pulled out um, from the email because there's so many of them. Podcast at rickygervais.com if you want to get in touch. Uh, Rob says he listens to the show in his exams, which I'm sure cannot be a good idea. I mean- No, cause that, that's a waste. What I'd do is the night before, I'd record all the answers and then listen to that, as yeah. opposed to me, you and Carl Pilkington. But, but surely you're not allowed to listen to your stereo or your iPod in an exam. That would be crazy, wouldn't it? Well, he's probably got a, you know, it's probably up his back, right, a little yeah. wire, wired to him, covered in sort of like some sort of fake flesh <laughs> yeah. and hair, and then just pops into his ear. It's all changed now though, isn't it, as well? What do you mean? Well, they're allowed calculators and that, innit? It's just, just sort of- Sorry, I had calculators in my exams. What, yeah, what, what, uh, world? What do you know about exams, Carl? No, you but, never showed up. But what I'm saying is, years ago, a calculator wouldn't have been allowed. We've moved on a bit now, haven't we? What year was this, though? I have an iPod. W with loads of people with abacuses? I don't- I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Rob's question was this. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I've, ne I've never heard him admit that before. <laughs> I think we've broken his yeah, spirit. Yeah. Carl, you go, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh no, we might have, we might have put an end to the, the, the phenomenon that is Carl Pilkington. Monkey news still to come. <laughs> <laughs> He's back! Anyway, listen, <laughs> Rob's question is this, Carl, it's specifically to you. Carl, if you could have a superpower, like Superman, what would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> Sorry, that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, x-ray vision. Flight. Invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. Intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, for, for God's <laughs> sake! No, no, but I'm just saying- It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or, do you know what I mean? Oh, no, what, just, would you, what because, do you wish you no, could do that's no, impossible because, is the question, no, or uh, uh, out of, what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility, is what <laughs> With I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it, w well, would you like spidey senses, is that what you're saying? Uh, would you like some senses? Would you like some sense, the power of sense? Um... Come on, Carl. You know what these superheroes because they can, they can. I know, but it always they, they're they... never happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider Man that wanted to tell that girl that he had he could climb walls and that. He's like, I can't. <laughs> Superman didn't never tell Lewis and that. Who's <laughs> Lewis? Who's Lewis? Lewis. Who's Lewis? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just a pen pal, of Superman. <laughs> His little secret chum! <laughs> yeah! yeah. yeah. Alright, Superman. <laughs> Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. 
<laughs> so... But you're being allowed to choose the superpower. You mm. don't have to get it forced upon you like the Hulk. <laughs> the Hulk, he wasn't happy! <laughs> It's true, he's got a theme. No, true. He has got a theme. There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpowers do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Everyone around the world now is thinking, what can Carl choose? Let's, let's, let's deliver it to him now, Carl. Think about it and give us the answer, please. Just, let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll have that. <laughs> right. Okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant power! It's a brilliant- And, and why- it's put, And it's put to such <laughs> brilliant <laughs> use! It's really well done! And why- <laughs> why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh, what would you gain from that? I don't know, you could sort of <laughs> go in go in shops when they're shut, so you don't have to go How would you get in? Just get in just before they lock up. <laughs> oh, yeah! And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. Brilliant. <laughs> so, hang on. So, that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> yeah. They found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak oh, into- Oh, no. mind. No, hang on, let's just- You want to sneak into HMV, right, wait- for 12 hours, <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> ah, I love it! Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't- I don't want a power. Why not? Cos I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> <laughs> I love this! It's like, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. Oh, not no. happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. <laughs> just going through a few more of these, uh, emails. This one is from, uh, David. He's in Los Angeles, California, 22 years old. He says he loves the show. But he says, with respect to Carl, never before have I understood so little of what a man says. <laughs> Virtually everything that Carl talked about was aloof to me. What on earth was he ranting about? Flies and condoms, monkeys and pushing the left button, cavemen and dinosaurs. And that's just some of you- I mean, let's be honest, if you are in America, I mean- that's the accent is probably a, a problem. But that is the best write-up we've ever had. Yeah. Flies and- imagine if you're a new listener, flies and condoms. Uh, what on earth does that mean? This one's from, uh, Kent Plummer, from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl, um, he was, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he uh, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous, uh, mantra, waste not, want not. Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he, what did he do? <laughs> what was his job? Benjamin yeah. Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from it, the 1800s. He was it, a, a sort of thinker, a, a philosopher, a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, he's also on a money. big political figure. He features on he's the on a, dollar bill a, or the $10 yeah. bill or something. Yeah. So he's, no, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers. Right. And he came up with the mantra, waste not, want not. You must know waste not, want not. I mean, that's just... Do you I'll, understand I'll, the I'll, phrase waste not, want not? Uh, no, not really, no. What, what does it mean? You've never heard that? I've, I've heard, I think I've heard it. But I don't know. I've never. I've never used it. But and when someone well, in, else said it, I don't know what. Well, in context, it. I mean, all I'm going to do now is paraphrase that and put some prepositions and stuff in it for you. I can't work out how you can't work out what that means. It's what? like uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it, and therefore you you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So. Uh, 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 so, so he was a bit of a well, hoarder. Well, if you don't waste food, for instance, then <laughs> you He's a bit of a hoarder! <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he, he ever said? No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profound so why things. Is that one he did remembered? experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more, inventing electricity, than someone- He didn't invent electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Did not impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying, well, it's not want not. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. <laughs> what I don't understand is go why, on. why he was the first person to sort of suggest, look, don't go chucking that out, keep it, you might need it later. 
Fine, he so wasn't the first person. Say that again. That is brilliant. That now that why isn't that catch on? That is amazing that you've just come up with there. That's poetry. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I'd just say, whoa, whoa, don't don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. <laughs> <laughs> don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. Carl Pilkington. Whereas some would argue that waste not what not is is perhaps a little bit more pithy, a little bit. We more, should uh, go through great say sayings and phrases and, sa and say see if he Carl, could, well. Firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean? And then secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. We'll, we'll make another one do that next time. Week. All right. Uh, so, uh, um, oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Winston Churchill. Um, mm -hmm. Never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you? Do you know what that means? So he's he's saying. Well, it's with regard to the Battle of Britain and the pilots that gave their lives. Yeah, I just, I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who who gave a lot for a few or whatever, right? No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were one of those few yeah, that I, gave so much for so many, i.e., it means the, these these few good men, their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person yeah. in the world and they Brilliant. they were few yeah. brave men, yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who, who gave up his life, right, I'd want a name check. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives. Well done on that. See you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> Yeah, bungled in. Yeah. <laughs> he made up a word. You want to be bungled in? You made up a word. See, that's it. You see, we've been looking for it. That's original. That's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. <laughs> Email here, Rick, from a man I know you're going to uh, look forward to one to meeting one day. Paul, the party animal, Parker. He's I imagine back. he had a wild Christmas. Oh, imagine well, I don't, the fun he got up to. He's he's sitting now in sunglasses with his mum giving him some soup because he's partying <laughs> too hard. <laughs> and I'll tell you this: I wish I was around there for New Year. Oh, imagine no. what he's going to get up to. Oh, his mom. Uh, if he recovers in time, it's going to be <laughs> mental. <laughs> <laughs> what does he want? Anyway, Paul the Party Animal Parker, he sent in a fact. That seems to be his thing now. He sends in facts that he thinks might be of interest to us. Uh, the kiss that is given by the bride to the groom at the end of the wedding ceremony originates from the earliest times when the couple would actually make love for the first time under the eyes of half the village. Wow. Now, a couple of questions straight away. Um, firstly, it, this is almost like a, a Carl fact, because yeah. there's no specific time or place. It was no. earliest times. Earliest times. I don't know whether that means the, that... the wedding ceremony in this country, in America, in, in, in Africa, who knows. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, it's a little bit vague. But this is the thing that struck me. Um, actually make love for the first time under the eyes of half the village. And you wonder why is it only half the village? Was it like, were they raffling off tickets? <laughs> yeah, the winners. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, exactly. You come and see two people getting it on. The rest of you, no, tickets only. It's oh, cordoned it's, off. It started off and then a few of them got bored. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've seen, once you've seen one stroke, you've seen them all. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, I don't, yeah, that's, that's about as good as it gets. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, no, I, don't, I don't, again, I don't know if there's any, if there's any truth. But what about that, Kai? How would you feel with that if you had to, uh, if you had to... At, at what point does that happen? Is that like, you know, they go, like, you know, I do, get your knickers off. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> presumably, if it's the, the, the origins of the kiss, um, you may kiss the bride. The old vicar used to say, as they were jumping over the broomstick, he used to go, right, give her one. Yeah. And then- You may knob the bride. Don't know it, how quick the lovemaking has to be, whether you've got to get in and out boom, and then, you know what I mean, because people are hungry, they want to eat, they want to have a disco, or whether they can go on for hours and people are just eating, chatting. I'll tell you what, Sting's wedding must have <laughs> must have gone been a for hours. Of a fair, wasn't it? <laughs> the, the, the guests must have gone and bringing in people their own brought cake. brought sleeping bags. <laughs> <laughs> Thermos flasks. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Right, do you know we've, we've chatted about uh, charities before, haven't we? Sure, yeah. Done a lot of stuff on that, right? It's coming back from Manchester, right? Got off the train at Euston, yeah. right? Got the train, walking through the, the, the busy bit and stuff. So this fella stood there, right? Like a charity worker, yeah. right? He, he, nice looking fella, he's got his suit on, a tie and everything, quite respectable and that, right? Look down at his bucket, all the all money's been put in the bucket and that, yeah. right? On the front of the bucket, right, he says collecting for the homeless at Christmas. Now, why can't they do that? What, the homeless? The, the homeless people. Why some fella <laughs> taking his time out, right, his own time where he could be at home? Why-, <laughs> why <laughs> Some of us have got homes to go to. Yeah. Why- why- do you know what I mean? What, what do you think, just give them the buckets? But what are the homeless people doing whilst he's doing that? <laughs> is what I'm saying. What, what have they got on the timetable? Cut out the middleman. Cut out the middleman. Give all the homeless a bucket, 
with a homeless for, written on it. For Christmas. Yeah. No, no admin. No. Just ki- keep everything you get, mate. What do you think of that? It's a brilliant idea. What would prevent a homeless person, an, an entrepreneurial or homeless person, just getting a bucket and writing yeah. that on there themselves? Could I suggest something? Um, hunger, uh, some drug addiction, uh, traumas, often mental illness. Um, just possibly too, too depressed to get up, put a suit on and go to Houston Station with a nice bucket with some writing on it. And then, right, I was thinking, thinking about that, right, and I was walking down, walking down the street in London with Suzanne. Saw a little homeless. Well, I didn't see the homeless bloke, right? I saw a leg, right, right sticking out of a doorway. <laughs> I thought, here we go, right? <laughs> Walk past it, right? You're not going to believe this. Go on. Homeless. Yeah. Chinese fella. I've never seen one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not having a go, right? <laughs> Well, have you ever seen? Uh, do you know what I mean? That that was a shock. I to really me. don't think I have. I think he's got me there. I I I hate to say it, but I must say I can't remember ever seeing a homeless uh, Chinese person. No. No, I suppose you're right. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Weird, isn't it? <laughs> well, that, I what, what, what I was at what what pass and I said to Suzanne, "Did you see that?" She went, "What?" I said, "Just look back there." She said, "What?" what? I said, "That homeless fellow." Look back at him. She said, "What?" I said, "He's Chinese." <laughs> And she said, yeah, good point. <laughs> good point! Of course she did! She, she said that to shut you up. She didn't yeah. want to get into a conversation with you! Oh, and what's God. your point, really, though? What exactly is your point? You're no, just perplexed because you've never seen it. It's just that we were chatting about homeless and that, and I saw that, and I just, I just saw, you know, I just, just found it a bit odd. Right. Well, <laughs> if you are perhaps based in America or Australia, Canada, um, have you ever seen a Chinese homeless person? Uh, this doesn't count to any listeners in China. Um, but, uh, anywhere else, have you ever seen a Chinese homeless person? Podcast at rickygervais.com. Uh, if you have, maybe you've got a picture you can send us as well. <laughs> but this is what, this is what we're looking for now. We're looking for, uh, how many Chinese homeless people can we, uh, can we find by, let's say, 2006? You know, January 2006, January 1st, how many Chinese homeless people have you seen? Rick, it's that time again. It's what the whole world is waiting for now. Is it Monkey News? It is Monkey News. Please perform live the jingle. Why do you say that? Oh, we've got a few people saying, oh, is that a pre-recorded jingle? (laughs) Yeah, like anything's pre-recorded. No, it's different every week. We've got that technology. I'll give it it a big one, shall I? Give it. Oh, chimpanzee that Monkey News, you (laughs) There we go. Right then, well, uh, got an email from John. Um, you know, if you've got any Monkey News going on in your area. Just <laughs> let us know, podcast at Oh, God, Just amazing! Spung it on email. And, uh, this one's sent in from John. Don't know where he is. But, um, do you know, like, they're running out of TV ideas and that? They're running out of TV ideas? Well, you know, they've, d- they? they've done a lot of stuff. I mean, if, yeah. if, if you were had to come up with a TV idea now, it, you struggle, don't you? Because every idea you come up with, it's kind of been done, on it? Sure. Okay. Right? It's like inventions and that. <laughs> right, they're so not getting monkeys to come up with TV ideas, are they? <laughs> well, no, right? But there's a there's a TV channel in uh, in Moscow, mm. right? And I think they had a bit of bad luck or something, a lot of redundancies and that, right? And whoever was in charge of it got a bit mental and got rid of loads of people, right? Yeah. And uh, they come in the next day and they were like, right, are we ready to go live and that? And someone comes running in with a clipboard saying, <laughs> we, we haven't got any people left. Right, to present. Oh, <laughs> nonsense. Right, right, tell you what. Right, okay, carry on, carry on. So, so he goes, what? If just one employee <laughs> turns out to be Simeon and is doing a good job, I'm never doing this radio show again. So this TV channel, you know, he's it's, it's having a lot of problems and that. He, it, they've got to go live, right? He's like, oh, what am I going to do? Anyway, for some reason, right, there was a chimp knocking about. <laughs> For some reason, that's the key piece of information. No, but but we didn't get it. Matter, we didn't get matter, it. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't it? It doesn't matter. 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 Imagine anyway. if that was in a film. <laughs> and they're going, well, look, I can't see where this plot goes. Well, he's just there. He's so, just there. So anyway, For so he sort reason. of says, get, get it in a suit, right? Why? So, <laughs> because they're running out of ideas, the clock's ticking, they've got to go live with something. What do you mean? What, what he's presenting? What is it, programme? Well, he's listen, presenting. Listen, it's a chat show. <laughs> I am not- they can't again, talk! Don't have a go at me, have a go at John, who sent this in. Right, and, and this be quiet, is... let's hear it, let's hear it again. 
So anyway, so like I say, so the, going live, five, four, three, two, one, whatever, you chimp sat there on the chair. Um, he was like, look, let's just get through tonight's show and worry about this tomorrow, right? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, so they put a chimp in a suit. Where, what, was that handmade or were the sleeves a bit short on him? You idiot, think. So, so anyway, it's sat there, right? And they're going, right, here we go. Good luck, everyone, right? Yeah. Uh, chimp's there. What programme is this? It's a chat show. But uh, who's, who's chat show is it? Well, it's, it's the monkeys. I like the fact that it's they... It's the monkeys now, is it? <laughs> Look, I, I, like, say, I like the fact that they put the chimp in a suit. It's like, no one's gonna take this chat show seriously <laughs> if he's not dressed up. <laughs> if he's not smart. Slovenly, look at that, <laughs> slovenly ape. So anyway, oh. let's, 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 you know, get to the point of it and that, right? So, anyway, so, they, they go on, right? It's all going, going... Didn't blinker. happen. There's no but way this happened. Here's a moment, fundamental so anyway. question. How was the chimp asking questions? Um, not, not sure about that bit, but <laughs> all, all I've got is the stuff that was on the news site for this. Like I say, I, I've given But it's you, rubbish! Yeah, but I've given you some facts. I've no, told no, no. you, there's a TV channel in Moscow that's having problems, right? I've, I've explained that no, bit. No, it's this rubbish. They've got rid of the presenters, the monkey sat there, right? Don't worry about it anyway, I'm telling you, it goes all right. All right. All right. Oh, so anyway, okay. in case you're worried, Rick. He's sat there, right? <laughs> Absolutely. They get shit. to the first break, they're like, can't believe it, right? You know, viewing figures and that, they're loving it, right? What? No, what? So how did they know the viewing figures in the break? Please and do not interrupt so the news. What, does the, what did the chimp do I mean, in the, the first half? Yeah, they, had a, they had a big guest on that, that week and what And what did he do? Just talk to Who himself? They walked on. So I Cher comes I'm on. Not, I'm yeah. not sure, but say if it is Cher, right? No. Right. The main gaffer is like going, oh, Cher's going to go mental at us, right, for putting Say it is. No, it is Cher. It, no, in his mind, it's Cher sitting there talking to a chimp in a suit. So anyway, she And they're filming off. it for Moscow TV, and the ratings are going through the roof. <laughs> Presumably there's a translator, because Cher doesn't speak either Russian or chimp. <laughs> <laughs> so she comes off, right, and the bloke who's in charge is like, she's going to go mad. She's going to go mad here. She walks up, she goes, I love that. <laughs> She said that's one of the best interviews, right? So anyway, they decided, right? It went so well, kept him on. He's still there. I love the fact that Cher was an idea that Steve threw up, and now she's going, I love that, I love that, I love that, Jim. Get oh. me back there. I want to go to Moscow. Never mind. Don't, Unbelievable. Don't, don't have a go at me, have a go at John, but, you know, if you've got any monkey news, send it in. Podcast at rickygervais.com. From the creators of The Office, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Extras, the first series, now on DVD. Who are you? Nobody. What's that? Who? Nobody. That's right. Nobody. And who am I? So the star ski I can never remember. You are guaranteed an Oscar if you play a mentor. I've just written a sitcom, but I wonder if you could give it to anyone you know. Is there any nudity in it? Well, it could be. Men or women? Either. Uh, well, just women. Yeah. I will make it so. A painfully funny double disc. Extras on DVD now. Thanks for listening. Happy New Year, particularly to our friends at Positive Internet. Oh, who host, guys have a wild They time. host this podcast and they do a brilliant job. Happy New Year to everyone around the world, and in particular, those guys at Positive Internet. And also, um, Paul Party Animal Parker, have a blinding New Year, because I imagine it's going to be crazy. You don't need to say it to him. It's, 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 I'm insulted that you have to tell him that, because there's no way you need to tell him that. He's going to...